Okay, welcome to the Arborist call for the uh, the 3rd of October. i just uh, do a sound check just to make sure that uh, my sound's working properly. Yep, uh, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, it's loud and clear. Here we are. Can you hear us? Okay, that's working. You can hear us now? <laughs> yep, I can. Yeah, right. We could hear you all the time. Good. Um, okay, so welcome to the, uh, to the Arbor's Call for the 3rd of October. It would be funny if I just couldn't hear anything went through the whole call. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to start off, as usual, with the core team updates, and then um, any uh, research and implementation updates, um, and then we'll uh, uh, open the open the floor up to our open announcements and then any discussion topics that uh, people want to raise we have nothing specifically on the on the schedule for uh today just a reminder that uh, arborist calls are uh, bi-weekly calls where people working on the zcash protocol come That's together fun. to uh, discuss timelines and processes to uh discuss potential new protocol features and to identify blockers and uh, how to work together to resolve them. And the idea behind these calls is to make uh, Zcash protocol development more accessible for a wider uh, uh, membership of the Zcash ecosystem and to provide uh, transparency into the uh, sausage making process that is Zcash development. Anybody can uh, can join these calls if you uh, want to want to want to get a get a reminder to to join them. You can sign up at Zcash, point your browser at zcasharbors.org and register there. And if you want to suggest a specific topic that you'd uh, like to present or, uh, or a topic for discussion, then just drop us an email on arborstcall at cfnd.org and we can uh, make that happen. Right. Uh, yes, Dara? Uh, so speaking of sausage making, um, we appear to have fixed testnet. Um, so we're, we're fixing testnet. It's not quite yeah. fixed yet, but we, we are catching up um, to the current time because obviously uh, the block time stamps were quite a, a way behind, but we've uh, worked around that and we're currently catching up at a rate of um, uh, about one minute a second, something like that. Um, and so um, testnet should be back to normal and we will give you the, all of the details um, of how to to connect to it and how to work around any problems that um, you might be having catching up. Okay, let, let me get through this intro a bit first and then, and then oh, I yeah, can get on to the actual, actual updates. Okay, thanks. Um, so if other ways to get involved with, uh, with Zcash, you can apply for a community grant and uh, point your browser at zcashcommunitygrants.org to learn more about that. You can join the Zcash R&D Discord where many of the engineers who work on Zcash come together to uh, and that's where they chat and coordinate. And there's the always exciting and spicy Zcash community forum, where there's lots of discussion about a wide range of topics. Um, and you can find all of these links by pointing your browser at zcasharborist.org. So let's uh, start off with um, updates regarding NU6. And I'll throw it back to you there. Ah, uh, yes, can you hear me? Uh, could you hear me before when I was talking about um, testnet? Yes. Yes, we could. Okay. Um, so, uh, in addition to what I said, then um, we have the um, release branch for uh, Zcash D six zero zero ready. Um, it's not yet um, uh, not ready. Not yet ready to be uh, tagged because we want to verify that um, uh, testnet is properly working and that the change um, that we made since the RC1 um, is uh, working properly. That's the change to set um, the block unpaid action limit to zero. Um, and I think that that should help with um, uh, transaction propagation and um, uh, where, when it's applied to mainnet. It should help with transaction propagation and um, uh, removing the remaining spam. 
I hope anyway. Uh, let's see. Chris, have I forgotten anything about NU6? Uh, you're uh, muted. You're muted. Uh, in the process of, uh, of doing that work, so we were collaborating with ZF engineers on that uh, yesterday, uh, and then today, uh, sort of, uh, so there are, we did discover a uh, network protocol difference between how Zcashd and ZebraD operates with respect to the initial block download phase. Um, this is something that it's not really a problem that, uh, that we need to be concerned about on mainnet, but it is uh, something that uh, sort of made the testnet stall worse. Um, we also identified a bug in Zcashd with respect to block template construction where um, we we had actually, uh, so this will be news, I think, to perhaps Aria and Colorado, but um, we did have code to do the uh, the um, time stamp clamping um, in the Zcashd block template construction. However, um, the input to that time clamping uh, was uh, being set incorrectly that uh, basically prevented it from functioning properly. So uh, there's a very small patch um, that we will add to the release branch to fix that. But um, but anyway, <clears throat> that combination of that bug and uh, the incompatibility meant that uh, our attempts to get the test net uh, back online last night weren't fully successful, but we should be now, uh, Dara M and I are both running miners that should catch us up to the chain tip that should then allow the uh, the new miner infrastructure that Yasser has set up on uh, the ECC infra to uh, begin providing mining power. And then we should actually have some, some stable mining power on testnet. Um, also our initial uh, our initial testing, I think, uh, you know, we, what we did was relatively minimal, but I'm uh, relatively content with it. Um, we may also, so we'll need to do uh, some uh, smoke testing um, once the release does, once the release is, uh, is tagged. But uh, um, at this point, I think that we are uh, NU6 or 600 release ready. Yes. Um, I, I mildly disagree that this um, uh, difference in protocol between uh, Zcashd and ZebraD is, um, is only relevant to testnet. It, it does um, affect the mainnet, and it would mainly show up as um, when the network is uh, has a greater proportion of uh, ZebraD nodes, uh, Zcashd nodes might sync more slowly. Um, uh, but we we can fix that. We know it's, we understand the problem well, um, and uh, I've filed bugs um, for both ZebraD and Zcashd. Basically, on the Zcashd side, it's just um, backporting a few fixes from Bitcoin, um, and on the ZebraD side, it's um, undoing a workaround that they um, made to try and uh, get ZebraD yeah, so working better with Zcashd in a different situation. So they, they tried to improve one situation and end up making another situation worse uh, by not following the, the protocol. The one thing that, uh, that has uh, kind of come out of this in terms of a realization is mm -hmm. that um, ZF, would you be willing to set up a Zebra D only public testnet that forks from um, the the once we have testnet fully back online, um, we should at, we should now set up a Zebra D only public testnet to begin preparation for the transition to no longer having Zcash D on the network, um, because I'd like for there to be uh, a stable. ZebraD only test net that we can hook up light wallets to and uh, you know run a light wallet D against and so forth so that we can start seeing what 
the network behavior is like when Zcash D is no longer on online. Yeah, that sounds coincidentally. We've been talking a lot about um, enhancing Zebra's testnet capabilities recently. So uh, yeah, that's definitely something we'd uh, we'd uh, be willing to to, yeah, to do. Because I I, th I think there's some emergent behavior of the network protocol that will be different between a pure uh, Zebra D only network and a network that is mostly um, Zebra D but has some um, Zcash D nodes. Yeah, I've 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 got to say that I'm I've been kind of I don't want to say surprised, but it I I don't find it surprising that uh, that that we have finally discovered some some um, issues or incompatibilities mm. between Zebra and Zcash D. <laughs> yeah, I I mean the the peer to peer protocol is one of the least well documented um, areas of the protocol, so um, yeah, that's that's where I'd expect to find some intro interoperability problems. Yeah. So cool. the effect, unlike a consensus divergence, um, that has a very obvious effect um, if it happens. Yeah, whereas network issues are, yeah, they, they tend to to manifest as flakiness rather than um, something obvious, or as security vulnerabilities. Uh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So our. Are you guys planning to do a a release uh, a, a six point zero zero release that will expire before um, the no, happening? That, or, no, that will expire yeah. in uh, January. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So this this will be the NU six uh, activating release. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So how is is um uh, ZPD one nine zero? Does that fully support NU six? Oh, do you need another release? Answer that. All right, go ahead. On testnet, it does, but on mainnet, not yet. We need to uh, update the minimum specified protocol version for NU6 right. on mainnet, and we also need to just add the activation height. But otherwise, uh, yes. Okay. Will that will that be a Zebra D two point or? Uh... Yes. Okay. You you could skip to six point zero. Um, okay, so so keep us um, informed about that um, so that we know when that's happening. I was going to say numbering things must be worse than naming things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Actually, may, maybe it would be confusing for the um, the ZBD numbers and the Zcash D numbers to be uh, similar. Oh, well, we only, we only have one network upgrade to worry about it, right? So that's true. Yeah. You can decide so, whatever convention you want after that. I'm afraid if you stay quiet, people are just going to keep talking. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, so I think it's going to be Zebra 2.0 kind of a RC release candidate or something like that, because it will not have the main activation heights, right? Is that correct? So, so we put out a 600 release yeah. candidate one without the main net activation height set, that does expire, uh, that does end the service halt prior to uh, the actual halving. Um, and then 600 final uh, sets the activation height. So the release candidate okay. is the only difference um, is, is right. that- Yes, we want to do the same. We are planning to start working on the release in the next week. Um, should be over for the end of the week, in the worst case, we hope. Is that okay with you guys? Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, um, okay. So Chris said something incorrect. Um, the There is another difference between uh, 600 RC1 and um, 600, which is the block unpaid action limit going to zero. Block one, sorry. Uh, the, um, remember we, uh, we said quite a while ago that we were going to set the um, block unpaid action limit to zero, meaning that um, we're, we're effectively no longer using the probabilistic alg uh, algorithm that allows some uh, unpaid actions. Um, and Zebra D already has this change. Um, 
but in Zcash D, that got delayed because um, although the change itself is a single line change, um, there are 1,300 lines of tests that needed to change. Um, okay, so that's a SIP. Sorry? That's a SIP change? It's a SIP change? Uh, it's a, uh, that's no, a good no point. Speed. We probably, we probably should document it in the zip. Um, but, uh, no, it's because it's a configuration option for both, well, it's certainly a configuration option for, um, Zcash D. Um, we didn't put it in a zip, but you're right. Um, because it significantly changes the network behavior. It should be documented in, um, sorry, what's what's the, is it zip 317? Yes, zip 317. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, it is. And I was going to say that it, it's only recommended in zip 317. So uh, it would be nice to update that, but everything is still yeah. following zip 317. Uh, exactly. Um, it's conformant we... to the, the current spec. Do we have that already in Zebra area? Uh, yes, we do. We we merged that I think a month ago or a few weeks before that. Okay, thanks. So basically, for us, the only difference between the candidate and the uh, actual uh, two point zero will be the main optimization height because we already have that, right? Okay, cool. That's good to know. Yeah, and um, th this is basically something that just got delayed um, because I was busy with other things. Because uh, I was busy with that uh, is relevant, 20, really. One thing that is relevant here is that the Zcash protocol crate uh, uh, version 0 0.4 has uh, been released, of course, as part of the Zcash D release. Um, so that sets the mainnet activation height in uh, the Zcash protocol crate. So uh, the mainnet uh, heights are there in the Libra Zcash libraries? Yes. Or they are, they are already yeah, in, there? Right. Yeah, so the, you could bump to uh, Zcash primitive 0 0.19, Zcash proofs 0 0.19, and uh, uh -huh. I think it's Zcash protocol. Just look at the versions. Up. Just look at the yeah. versions yeah, that um, that Zcash D six zero zero depends on. And yeah, that's it's, it's, it's uh, cargo .tumble. Yeah, Zcash protocol zero four and Zcash address zero six, and then Zcash proofs and primitive zero dot nineteen. Even check the change log for that. Do you think they are breaking changes from Zebra? On top of your head. Well, um, I would count that as definitionally a, a breaking change because it's supporting a new network upgrade. Yeah, it's it's not an API breaking change, but it's a semantic breaking change. So therefore, it's, okay. not, it's a full version bump mm. okay. through the stack. Fortunately, it's it's an easy breaking change, right? You just have to update cargo tunnel, and you're basically done. Well, I would love to see that, but in general, it that's not the case. We have to make additional changes. But if the API didn't change, I guess, uh, yeah, it would be easy to do. I hope because I probably have to do it. <laughs> it would it would be nice for um for us to be able to just have the one source of truth for uh network upgrade heights and have that be um not yeah. necessarily in the Zcash protocol crate because it is it is a hassle to have to bump the whole stack. But what we've talked about is factoring out a separate crate that just has the constants um, mm. and uh, and then depend upon those constants at sort of, sort of have Zcash protocol define, define the interfaces and then uh, like, I don't know, call it Zcash constants, define the uh, the constants and then you depend on just the Zcash constants for the network upgrades that you support. Yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, we're we also thinking that we have a duplicate transaction structure. And we wanted to use the one in Zcash client backend or whatever, 
or premium. We, we don't need to make that change yet. Um, I, I yeah. started not refactoring, um, and I got actually a fair ways into it uh, at RustConf, but I haven't picked it up since I got home. I, I came home and had COVID, and then uh, it's been oh. busy since then. Okay. Yeah, no, but uh, with the foundation, I'm thinking of removing somehow the transaction structure we have in Zebra and use the one that you guys have in Zika's primitives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that the, I think that the right way to approach that, and this is something I discussed with Arya and, uh, and, uh, yeah. Camarado. Oh, right. it, oh, right, right. Okay. Is, is, uh, is that, um, instead of removing the zebra transaction type, um, the refactoring that I started on takes and wraps the Zcash, it, it removes the, the enum, the transaction enum, but it keeps a transaction type that supports the same operations, um, so that nothing downstream sort of needs to know, but then it just wraps the Zcash D or the Z, the Libra Zcash uh, or Zcash primitives transaction type in a uh, zero size, you know, a, a new type wrapper. Um, yeah, so that will make way, the change not so big, yeah. right? Because yeah, and, it, it makes and also, similar. and also it's wrapping um, a particular generic instantiation of that type. Yeah. Um, so that you're, you're not having the complexity of um, those genetics that you don't really need in. Um, in yeah, you don't have to propagate the type parameters everywhere and stuff. So I think I think yeah. that's the the way forward. I just yeah, I, I even if thought about that in the last two weeks. Yeah, even if you were using it directly, I think you would want to use the type areas. Yeah. Um, is that everything about any any, any other questions? Sorry, I had his hand up. It looks like you lowered it now. I was just going to say that uh, rather than using the constants, we could, in Zebra at least, probably just use the Zcash primitives or Zcash protocol network upgrade type directly or through a new type wrapper. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a local decision for Zebra Day, I think. Okay, let's move on. And um... the, the, main, the main reason that we want to factor out the Zcash constants is just to make it so that, because right now we have to, when we make a, a network upgrade or when we change the constants, which admittedly doesn't happen that, that often, we have to release you know a stack of six crates that even if there are no API changes. So getting away from that and just depending upon the constants like at the application layer is kind of how uh, how we'd like to go with things in, in as much as we possibly can. Okay, sorry, Dodger, go ahead. Right, um, ECC updates. Uh, okay, we've gone through um, CKSD. Um, uh, let me try I, and I remember an what everything else is. Go on. Yep. Yes, I, I Chris, give... thank you. <laughs> Um, so, uh, on the Zashi side, um, there are a bunch of new features that are going to be coming out in the next uh, week or so, including, um, address book functionality, uh, zip 321 integration, um, and, uh, a Zashi redesign at the UI la layer, um, that, uh, that's pretty spiffy at, uh, so there's a lot of nice stuff there. Um, at the uh, crate layer, um, we fixed finally the note commitment tree corruption bug that uh, that we had had, um, and that involved uh, that that was a consequence of a bad API decision in the in the uh, incremental Merkle tree crate from three years ago or something like that. Um, so uh, that API had. Uh, a foot gun in it that, uh, you know, I was able to misuse my own API. Um, so uh, there, there's a new release forthcoming of the shard tree crate um, that fixes that API foot gun um, that for those who are using the shard tree crate uh, directly, um, I highly recommend carefully reading the, the request, the release notes, because there are uh, 
some semantic changes that uh, must be respected uh, by third party um, trade implementations. Um, in most places, I tried to make it so that they would be uh, API breaking changes, um, but there is one uh, change that is not API breaking where um, you would just have to read the release notes and update the semantics of uh, the implementation of the method accordingly. So uh, just be aware of that, but, uh, but that fixes something that has caused me no end of problems uh, over the past few years. And this, uh, this uh, uh, note commitment tree um, corruption bug was just sort of the, the last straw. Um, uh, apart from that, Let's see, Strad has been, I'm trying to remember what Strad's been working on because um, <laughs> he's also been doing a bunch of stuff that uh, I am not remembering at the moment. Um, yeah, some related to the NU6 upgrade and other other pieces related to, um, yeah, uh, stuff that's going into the wallet crates. Um, I can't remember whether at the last Arborist call the protocol spec had been updated for NU6. Um, so, so it has been. Yeah, the protocol spec and all of the um, the relevant set. Yeah, including the the address for the ZCG slice. Yeah. Yes. Okay, any questions for ECC? If not, let's move on to... Oh, so, so um, uh, should we announce that Sean is going to be working on um, uh, scalability? Sean Bob. Yeah, Sean is now uh, funded independently of, Z of ECC to... Uh, to work on Zcash scalability. Looking forward to that. Cool. All right, let's move on to uh, Zcash Foundation. And I'm not sure who's in the hot seat today. Is Alfredo or Aria? Uh, it's me. Thank you, Dodger. Um, so in Zebra, since the last Arborist call, PRs have been merged for copying parts of the Zcash DRPC test framework over and applying them to Zebra and returning errors instead of panicking during contextual block validation in the state when Zebra can't find a block's parent. There are also new PRs open for restoring the internal miner, though this is still blocked and is unlikely to be merged anytime soon. Um, verifying orphaned mempool transactions, so transactions in the mempool that, stand, that spend transparent outputs of other transactions in the mempool, and including those transactions in block templates. A fix for returning errors from the send raw transaction RPC method so that it doesn't return a result until a transaction has either been inserted into the mempool or rejected rather than after it's gone through the transaction verifier. Uh, adding authentication to Zebra's RPC server with cookies, adding indexes and read state service requests and responses for querying spending transaction IDs by spent outpoints or revealed nullifiers, and making the box up the having interval configurable on custom test nets and matching the having interval in Zcash D for a reg test. I didn't quite hear that thing about nullifiers. Oh, uh, we have a PR open for adding the indexes from revealed nullifiers to the transaction IDs that revealed those nullifiers. Ah, okay. The, and, and is there also one for the uh, outpoints to the transactions that spend them? Yes, it's it's in Excellent. the same PR because I wanted to keep the, the DB format upgrade. Like it's just faster to do them yeah, at the same the single time. Single update upgrade. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's fantastic. That that will be excellent. Thank you. Incredibly helpful. Um, uh, also, also the validation of um, um, often transactions um, that are changed transactions. That's um, that's really important. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. The um, the other thing I was going to ask about. So you said that the that that the um, the local miner um, probably was not going to merge anytime soon. Um, what is required there? Because you know, I'm I'm pretty enthusiastic after this te testnet debacle about getting a a zebra only testnet going, and that obviously will re require a miner. Um, so, how wh what uh, what needs to be done there? I need to review the Equihash PR that uh, 
is in libra ccache for converting like the c++ code from zcash d over to c and mm -hmm. adding rust bindings um there's one file left that i need to review if anyone else could help with the review as well uh, that might move things along but I'll that's that's the that. main blocker thank you so, so is the is there a branch where um local mining with uh, zebra d works Yes, it's the restore internal uh, miner branch. It just can't be merged into main because right. our CI checks that all the crates can be released. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, oh. I, I was trying um, in the the attempt to fix testnet. I was trying to um, mine using um, zebra D, and I wasn't using that branch, which is the problem, presumably. Ah. The so so in terms of that crate release. Um, we should coordinate on yeah once the once the libra zcash changes um go in we're going to have a crate release of uh zcash client backend and zcash client sqlite uh here uh probably early next week i'm expecting um <clears throat> so it likely won't go into that one but uh but we can follow on with a crate release for that uh pretty quickly after Has ECC ever run a, a an ASIC miner? We do not have any any ASICs. No, I, I'm not aware of us ever having had an ASIC. Okay, cool. Any other questions relating to Zebra? If not, let's move on to Zcash the deprecation. I think the big um, well, one of the important updates here is that the uh, Zynga Labs grant application has been approved. So they're going to be starting work on Zeno imminently. Um, I just wondered if there's uh, any other updates from either team on this topic. Uh, so I go on, Chris. Um, so Strad and I have been. Uh, moving toward towards sort of uh, the the you know building an initial skeleton of a wallet service. Um, so we have a repository for it now, and uh, he and I have just been talking a bit about uh, about how that will be structured. But we should have we should have like the barest bones of skeleton up uh, sometime soon um, that uh, that will be. <laughs> You know, relying on the light client uh, code base for uh, its chain data, but uh, but you know we're gonna we're gonna do sort of the minimum viable uh, wallet service so that we have something to uh, to hack on and build against. Cool. I feel like that's a major yeah. uh, major milestone in this process. Yes. Any other questions or comments on Zcash deprecation? Um, just a quick update. We're um, like Pili, the centralist Dan and myself are like starting to work on the ecosystem outreach um, to anyone. We're trying to reach anyone running Zcash D and uh, so if you're hearing this and uh, you're run uh, in the internet, you're hearing this on YouTube, whatever, um, just uh, ping us in the forums um, and let us know how you use your CKSD um, infrastructure or leave us a contact um, so that we can reach out and with some questions we will be doing anyone running Zcash D. Uh, we want to know uh, basically everything that it's useful to, you know, get every requirement in uh, for the day we sunset uh, Zcash D and, and we say goodbye to it <laughs> and farewell. But we don't want to leave anyone behind on their use cases. So we need to actually kind of reach out uh, which is a challenge in a privacy-minded uh, community. So it's going to be fun. Um, so, speak, I mean, that, speaking of the that, most, go on, Chris. Um, so I, I have a a a weekly held and potentially somewhat controversial uh, position 
which is that um, I think that we should start with uh, no support for the Zcash D wallet RPC APIs. Um, essentially, none of the existing Zcash D RPC wallet APIs um, exhibit the kind of behavior that uh, that we actually want. And um, I think that they also don't serve uh, exchange users and so forth uh, particularly well. I think we should very seriously consider taking this opportunity to make breaking API changes uh, since people are going to be ha having to do some upgrades um, that preserve the, the spirit of the existing operations, but I do not think that we should be making a drop-in replacement. Because some of, you know, I've been looking at the Zcash D wallet RPC methods and some of the relative, the more important ones, we do not want to replicate those semantics. Um, in particular, we don't want to replicate the semantics of the get new address method where <clears throat> those addresses are all treated as uh, feeding a single uh, unified pool of funds. And so, uh, we should we should talk as a community, but but in this outreach process, um, we should attempt to gather requirements not in terms of the existing Zcash DRPC methods, but in terms of the actual business requirements. I I agree to a certain extent, and also disagree. So I agree that. Um, the important thing is to um, to figure out the business requirements, um, and the RPC API should be secondary to that. But also, I think that it is possible to um, to provide a um, a drop in replacement for most of the API that does not necessarily do exactly the same thing as the current um, API. So, to take um, get new address as an example. Um, you can express that in in terms of accounts. So um, you you can say that um, all uses of getting your address return an address in a um, a given account. Um, you can. And... This this is this is exactly so. When I made my point earlier about the shard tree changes, I said mm -hmm. that there was one dangerous change, which is a semantic change that doesn't also involve an API change. That is something that I think I think the danger is even higher for Zcash D wallet users. That it's... if there is not a breaking API change, they may assume incorrect semantics, and that's what we don't want. I, I mean, so if you think about the semantics of the the current semantics of get new address, um, it's defining a pool of funds, which is the same thing that an account is. Basically. Yes, but there are other things to, to consider here, Dara Emma. So, for example, the um, so the existing uh, methods to send transactions, mm -hmm. they, um, I, I guess they treat they they use a single pool of funds. We do have some API sure. methods that take an address as a source of funds, and those no longer have meaningful semantics. So th so, this is so what where I. What I think it, what I think we should do, is define the semantics, uh, and for that we need to know what uh, what business logic we'll need, um, and then define a mapping of the RPC methods to those semantics. So we, we can say, for example, that get new address is equivalent to this other um, uh, uh, API that um, is part of the the API surface that we want, um, and so. You can reason about the um, the legacy APIs um, via that mapping. It's it's like defining a kernel language and a, um, a surface it, language. It's it's only true if all of those changes are non-breaking. Um, I let's we, we should, let's discuss define, whether that's possible. Yeah, we we should we should define no semantically breaking changes that use the same API calls. Right, so people have had their hands up. So let's call uh, Alfredo first. 
Yeah, so I definitely agree with that. I think it would be a good opportunity to just do another API. Um, in the other hand, I'm not sure if we if we do that, we are losing the uh, the little business that we have built in Zcash. We will be losing it if we just do it that way. It's too radical. So I agree with Daria, Emma, that middle point will be to be able to map the other APIs with documentation to the new stuff so people will have something to actually figure out how to continue their business. Uh, because the other way around is the ideal world where Zebra support, Zebra or Zeno or whatever supports all the RPC methods that CKSD has right now, which each time we talk about it is more and more work to make that happen. Um, the, just an interrupt here. Um, the advantage of the approach that I, um, I gave where you're, you're mapping the old APIs to the new semantics is that you not only implement it that way, which simplifies the implementation, but you document it that way. And then that tells people how to move to the new APIs. So if, if we can do that in a semantics preserving way, um, which is not clear to me at the moment. So I, I have two points uh, to two responses here. The first is that um, for the NU7 release, we will need the full 16 week uh, adoption window. Um, we cannot shorten that for the the NU7 release. Um, so once NU7 is implementation complete, has been audited, and has been tested on testnet for a month, um, then that will be when the 16 week deprecation window begins. That then gives us the opportunity within that window. I mean, to if we so if we present so a i don't believe that we will see uh any uh or we will see many users start to attempt to migrate until that point so that 16 week window is is when it becomes possible for end users to migrate um at that point uh we will have some time to add backwards compatibility to those APIs if, if we absolutely have to, but we shouldn't start from the assumption that we actually have to. Um, so I am more optimistic about the chances of getting at least some important third parties to um, to upgrade well before then. I agree that there will be a tale of um, uh, of um, third parties that that won't up upgrade until then, or won't even try to upgrade until then. So, so part of my motivation here is that this is really the first network upgrade in Zcash history where there is going to be a forcing function that could allow us to, for example, um, make a smooth path for exchanges to support shielded deposits, right? Um, if we reproduce the transparent only APIs, then we are smoothing the path for continued fully transparent functionality, which is not what I would think we want to do. I think we want to be full Zcash protocol support is what is supported in the APIs, and then only if we really have to, we provide transparent-only support. I, I mean, the, this is basically a, um, a business decision, decision based on um, how likely it is that we think that various important um, exchanges and other third parties are likely to um, upgrade to, to shielded um, support because my impression is that um, in some cases yeah it's because it's uh, there's some technical difficulty and they just um, uh, they just reproduced what they were doing with uh, Bitcoin um, but in a very large proportion of cases it's regulatory stuff or it's um, it's fear of potential regulatory stuff 
Um, and that's just too complicated for them to reason about. Now, some of those um, well, that, that, parties, that, may, maybe it doesn't matter that we that they fall off the network. That that inability to reason about it is exactly why I think that we should provide new APIs to begin with, and then we will get concrete information about mm -hmm. about whether or not users are willing to support the full the full Zcash protocol, or whether they are whether they require and you know to be to be clear, I think that the new APIs we provide should make it possible to operate in a uh, transparent only fashion, but that shouldn't be the default. Well, well, well I, I mean, all risky, it's too risky to, yeah, that's... you know, <laughs> just put me transparent transactions right now and we don't support it and we're going to do it in a few weeks. It's, you you yeah. might, you might get a lot of the listings. Yeah, I think you get a lot. I think, I think Zcash will be delisted from 95 plus percent of the exchanges that are currently listed. I mean, this is an empirical question though. Um, this is something that Paku and the folks who are doing that outreach and Dan uh, need I to did, find out. I, but yes, it's, yes, it's also scope creep. Uh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not so much scope creep because um, it's actually doing less work potentially. But the, the problem is that if we do end up needing those APIs, then we don't want to be in a position where we only have a short um, length of time to, to implement them. Uh, and I disagree with Chris um, fundamentally. I don't think that 16 weeks um, it's, it's, is, but that's not the right time to implement those APIs. It's, it's scope creep in the sense that the, the objective of this project is to deprecate Zcash D. It's not to try and force um, exchanges to accept shielded deposits. Paku. Um, yeah, um, although like philosophically, like uh, Chris's idea, it's appealing. Um, I, I tend to uh, agree more with there I am uh, um, in, in terms of how to proceed. Also, I, I said that this was controversial it, and, and, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't believe that I'm on the side of the argument. Um, I, I also would like to say I think that this is a government places. question. It is, yes, absolutely. That's the point that I was um, it's, it's trying because to make you're sure. in a I said a bit. I said a, a business decision. Can excuse me, guys? Can we let Paku speak, please? He's had his hand up. He's waited patiently. <laughs> can we please mute everybody I'm else and let Paku speak? <laughs> and that's okay. Don't, don't need to do that. It's fun. Um, yes, I think that all. Uh, um, I would. I would actually think that maybe there's a way uh, to actually have. Uh, both in terms of that we we may not want to implement one-to-one -one functionality on the final result but actually provide the functionality on a um, kind of a middleware basis where we do provide a smooth path of seed cash deep deprecation without actually moving tech debt from one place to the other, um, but we definitely want um, people running businesses to have a low a, a low amount of disruption, um, because behind those businesses there are users, and uh, most I care about the users, not the businesses. Um, so if we disrupt the businesses, the, the users won't have maybe they won't have a way to actually use their funds uh, neither to eject themselves from the from those businesses to uh, self custody at all so we have to kind of like give a, a smooth uh, way forward but i totally agree with with Chris on on that side of you know having putting the greater amount of effort in the in making the new thing good. 
but um, maybe there's there are ways to actually architect the the final shape of it. I think that Zyno is is a a good a good component to maybe provide this translated APR when uh, and uh, and you know people will be connecting through Zyno or a module of Zyno or a feature of Zyno that actually helps you have a smoother transition. Um, that list of awful RPCs that we don't want in the new place is super important for us uh, because if we optimistically get a lot of answers from the outreach, we can actually start to create a census of uh, who's using what and which are the most used, mostly used RPCs. And we can estimate how difficult or how disruptive this will all be. Maybe the ugly ones are not the most popular RPCs and we can, you know, um, lessen the drama about it. But I, I don't think that we should include a question of, would you mind if we break everything? <laughs> just this once, that's just this one time. <laughs> Would you not love us for that? <laughs> because nobody will say, hey, yes, I don't care. You break everything. Just, you know, make it, make Zebra awesome. Uh, so it's kind of a non question for us to, to send. Um, well, that, that's yeah, not that's, the right question. The, the question is really about, about like business requirements. So like, how do you, how do you um, handle, you know, do you generate per customer addresses? You know, what are your requirements around those? Um, and so focus the questions not on the RPC methods, but on the business requirements. Uh, Dara. I, I, I completely agree about focusing on business requirements. And um, the thing is, if we can um, uh, do this technique where we express the, um, the less preferred um, methods in terms of the more preferred ones. Um, and, and that's an open question whether we can um, do that adequately. If we can do that, then we can use um, Paku's idea of um, putting that mapping in a different component. Um, and that can potentially be developed in parallel. So, so as long as we've, we have those um, mappings documented, um, that component, it, it doesn't need to depend on uh, it being the new indexer or um, Zebra D that's um, performing the, the, that functionality because you can run it against Zcash D as well. So it, it removes a blocking relationship from the, um, the dependencies, which I think would be a very, very valuable thing to do. I think I'm next. So the, the, the two, two, two points I wanted to make. The first one is that um, business requirements and technical over requirements often overlap in a in a in a in a weird way. So um, an example might be where it is a business requirement that they don't want to spend loads of money to um, uh, or loads of engineering efforts to to um, uh, upgrade, you know, to a to a to a new piece of software because in my experience from talking to exchanges in the past they're they, they primarily want to focus their engineering efforts on uh, on adding new coins so that they can generate more revenue from 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 adding new coins and regulatory uh, constraints are themselves a a business requirement um, I do, you know, agree that we we shouldn't assume that simply replicating the existing um, set of APIs is the is is what's required. Um, certainly, that should be that should be part of the uh, part part of the question. And I think it was probably eighteen months ago. I was I was chatting with Coinbase a bit, and they pointed me um, towards a uh, an API specification that they at the time had called Rosetta. I posted a link um, to the the new uh, version of it, which is called Mesh, apparently, in the in in the chat. Um, and there are 
you know, I, I think it'll be interesting to find out if there, it, it, it may well be that, that some exchanges, if we say to them, hey, what's your preferred interface? They may point to something like this, if not this. And the simple fact of the matter is we don't know. All we're doing is guessing. All we're doing is assuming. All we're doing is speculating um, until we actually have those conversations. Now, we've already been able to start those conversations with miners. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll soon be getting the uh, the necessary uh, contacts and added to the necessary telegram groups to be able to to get them started with exchanges. But um, you know, I would I would I, I think absolutely right. We shouldn't be assuming that that the you know simply replicating the current APIs blindly is the is the way to go. There will be a if if we are going to change the API, then it it. It may be that there are some exchanges who say, right, we're not going to be, we're not going to be supporting that. In that case, it becomes a trade-off of, well, do we want to, you know, support everybody, or do we want to say, well, actually, we're happy to lose um, certain exchanges, um, and that goes goes the same for uh, for effectively not supporting transparent anymore, with just the, the difference that the number of exchanges would be would be far far greater. So I'm I'm looking at this mesh uh, mesh API that you linked, and uh, you know that this seems like a really good potential way forward, um, because then it's not we are giving you our new API; it is we are moving our support to the this standard, and I think that's a much stronger position to be in. So yeah. It is it, the, the it only is a question is we position. don't know it's, we don't know how widely adopted the standard is. That's the only thing. It's it's also scope creep, um, because it's a new API. Yeah, I agree. Like a, a, anything that isn't simply a drop and replacement for Zcash, the to my mind, is scope creep. I, I I disagree. I think that um implementing just the subset that is not already deprecated. Um, and remember that some of these methods have been deprecated for um, for years in some case, some cases. Um, so um, if you use a deprecated API, you, you're acknowledging that it may go away. Um, okay, let, let, let me rephrase that then to say, implementing the non-deprecated set of Zcash the APIs. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I feel like- That's, that, is, that is actually an important difference. <laughs> well, you, you, if if-, if... So Dodger, you might be uh, you might be somewhat distressed. Then, uh, how much of the deprecated API is still in use by yes. third parties? Because uh, virtually everything that I've talked about removing is is deprecated. Yeah. Well, then, well, then that's that's a you know we need to be talking to our cust to our users and our customers then yes. effectively. Yeah, and, and if we, and when, know, like, we, when we do that outreach, if we're sitting here in in you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be controversial here. If we're sitting here in, a, in, a, in an ivory tower wanting to to deprecate uh, API, you know, interfaces that we don't like and RPC interfaces that we don't like, and it's going to massively inconvenience our end users, what does that say about our about our our priorities? Like our job here is, I, to, I mean that, is my, to make my position available for as many people as possible, not to make it a a perfect thing that nobody uses. It reminds me of, of of the old the old analogy that you can make a computer really really secure by encasing it in cement and uh, burying it in a hole in the ground, but then you can't use it. I I mean my position is that we can have the best of both worlds by doing this mapping, um, uh, and then the deprecated parts it becomes clear that they're implemented by another um, component that is optional. Um, and that it needn't be um, ECC or ZF that maintains that component even. Uh, Aria. I agree. I like the idea of a mapping, but in general, I think actually that proposition seems like such a big change, but despite the very hunting and enormous opportunities that it enables, Sticking to the minimum set of requirements would probably be best uh, until after Zcash D has been deprecated. I I don't think it's feasible to use this as leverage to um to try and move people to shielded. Um, uh, so despite being I, I'm a privacy fundamentalist basically, um, and so it it pains me um 
that we can't do that now, but we are missing important functionality um, that we would need um, in order to um, to move everyone to Shieldit, even if there were no um, kind of regulatory FUD involved. Um, and it, it's unfortunate that we've been distracted by a lot of other things like the sandblasting, for example. Um, but we we have always had a plan to fill in that missing functionality for um, Shielded. Uh, and Frost is part of it, there are other parts. Um, and once we've done that, we'll be in a much stronger position to, um, uh, uh, to, to do that migration or to, to strongly encourage people to migrate. And that, that will involve, um, it will depend on how the like, regulatory landscape evolves as well, at least in the case of centralized parties and for decentralized um, uh, for DEXs and so on, um, maybe it's um, a, an easier shift for them and the, the focus needs to switch in that direction. Uh, Parker. Yeah, um, I agree with what Dara has said. Also, I do believe that the, the opportunity here is to move on to a more like a less monolithic, more modular and maintainable architecture. So that um, although we might not be having the API or the ERPCs of, of our dreams, we could eventually get to it, um, which now is, is just like possibly not technically feasible because of the the state of CKHD. So I think that the it's important to have um the like the the short time the, the the yeah short term goals um always present um given that we 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 can focus on like zebra now not being a, re, a sole replace, replacement of everything that CKHD did it can now be just a consensus node. We can have other infrastructure like Zyno to do other work that is more extend, uh, easily extensible. Probably try to focus on how to build other stuff that can, uh, co you know, cooperate and build, you know, horizontally instead of monolithically on, um, on the node. So. Um, I guess that's that's the opportunity here. Like to instead of like thinking of like how we can use this opportunity to you know make people do this thing. Um, it's I guess that people will move in and appreciate um, the new infrastructure um, if we really put an effort on it being um, better ergonomically like have a better developer experience you know make things easier for people maintaining the infrastructure and that is not that we're the ones like not having the headaches anymore and maybe you know delegating the headaches to other uh, people i don't know having to move to the new thing like uh, and instead of like doing the new stadium analogy um we can try to build um, something that that can be, you know, potentially uh, really good in the midterm and uh, not a hassle in the short term for for any partner that is actually uh, supporting Zcash. And that's kind of like how I see the opportunity here. Then moving to Shield it is another. Thing and it possibly will be much more easy when we don't have all the tech that that CKD is. So we can focus on that later after we achieve this. Yeah, I, I mean, in, in terms of moving to shielded, um, I think the emphasis should be on the carrot rather than the stick. Um, and so we have some really encouraging um, progress on shielded hardware wallet support, for example. And with Keystone, um, 
So Frost is um, finally becoming usable. Um, we are getting there. Um, it's been a slow process, uh, but we are getting there. And um, we need to provide that functionality and make that functionality better than um, what we currently have for transparent. Uh, you're right, Paku. Um, that that's the only way to encourage um, people to switch if by making the the developer experience, um, and eventually that that will um, pass through to the user experience better. Right, I'm going to draw a line under this topic because we're way, way, way off the uh, the, I know. the stated topic. We've got an agenda <laughs> to get yeah. through, and I think you know the, 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 this almost is is is, is a microcosm of. Uh, of, of the Zcash project in a way where we get distracted and we don't do the things that we all agree that we need to do and that we've uh, that we've committed to doing. Yeah. Just one last thing, it, like this kind of questions that, for example, Chris uh, came up with, um, I took notes, like, like um, how do you generate per customer, do you generate per customer addresses or things that you, uh, think that it's important to know, uh, please reach out to Pili, Dan, or myself, and, and we can, you know, collect all these things and, um, you know, start uh, sending this, these uh, questions to the ecosystem. Um, it's, a, it's a team effort, community effort. Okay, moving on, let's hear uh, an update from the Trailing Finality team. Uh, one last thing on that point. Uh, I, I think this has been a hugely productive conversation because uh, um, uh, at least I have um, thought of a bunch of new um, ideas for how to do that mapping, which uh, is a different approach than um, we were thinking of before and could be a much faster uh, and better approach. Um, so about trailing finality, um, uh, there has been no uh, updates on that. Okay, she, both Shield Labs and, uh, Shield Labs has both Zuko and Jason here, so maybe they can say something. Oh, that's true. Can I go for Jason? Go for it, Zuko. Uh, there's only a couple of things to say about crosslink slash trailing finality. Um, one is that we're hiring, we're interviewing and hiring. And so please, if you know anyone who's interested in protocols and mission of Zcash, send them our way right away before we hire someone else. Um, the other is that at the next Arbor's call two weeks from now, we will present like last call for what are the requirements for this first deployment? I'm not exactly sure what form that'll be in, but there'll be some way to record um, everyone's input by then, if anyone wants to give input. In the meantime, you can always give input on this totally unstructured, messy Google Doc that I just pasted or contact any of us by any means. That's all. Any questions on trailing finality? Okay, any updates on the Zcash Sustainability Fund? Okay, and we don't have um, anybody here, I think, from Zcash Shielded Assets. Just looking, I don't see anybody. If anybody is here, stick up your hand or ask to be promoted to a panelist. We can come back to you. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have anybody here from the Frost team uh, today. They will provide an update at the next call in two weeks' time. So let's open it to the floor for any open announcements that people want to make. In which case, we can return to open discussion if people want to continue that discussion. Otherwise, we will uh, reassemble for the next Arborist call in uh, in two weeks, and that will be in the earlier time slot.
Do people want to continue that discussion about uh, um, about uh, um, what are the um, next steps um, for um, fixing testnet? If is there something that people uh, using testnet previously should do um, um, to contribute to chaos and contribute to fixing? I uh, didn't... We we will post um, everything about that in Node Dev on the um, R and D Discord. All right. So that's that's where you should be if you're trying to get anything to work on Testnet. Uh, Chris, you're muted. The answer should now, I believe, be just wait a few hours um, for uh, us to catch up to for for testnet to catch up to the the chain tip such that all of the nodes uh, agree that they're in a state where the of where the block height that they're expecting corresponds to the time that they're expecting, um, and then the network should just start functioning again. Um, but uh, yeah, we can follow up on the Discord. Yeah, let, let me let me just have a look at what the current block time is. Bear with me. I can just do this quickly. Aria, just uh, thank you to everyone who who helped fix testnet, and um, a reminder to anyone that's running Zebra on testnet that if you followed the wrong fork on the the finalized part of your chain, um, you can use the copy state command to just copy the, the parts of the state that are on the right fork out. And there are notes about it in the Zebra 1.90 release notes. Um, I'm just looking at the timestamp of this block. Uh, where's the timestamp gone? Okay, and paste that into a converter. Is there, are there any actions that have to be run on the Ccash Explorer? That is we are up to date. I okay. think we're up to date. I'm surprised at that because when I looked at the estimated uh, uh, chain tip height when I started my node before, it was saying uh, that we were would be about seven thousand blocks higher than uh, than. We actually are. I don't know whether that estimate uh, was would be disregarded. So, so if you can see the um, the current Unix timestamp um, is uh, it, we 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 can leave it. I'll, very, I'll, I'll just it's I'll very just close to the yeah. It's very close to the um, the last block. It's going to be a document about when, what went wrong, the testing, the, how to fix it. We, we should absolutely do. We should absolutely do a retrospective and and um, write down notes from that. Yes, it's a good cool. idea. I think um, that 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 this may be completely wrong, but the impression I picked up is that uh, um, one person was was running a miner to feed a a faucet. And mm. they they didn't um, they didn't upgrade, and as they, anyway, because they 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 didn't realize that they were the only <laughs> miner maintaining testnet, and as a result, um, their their node fell off testnet, and uh, and that's what actually uh, actually kind of kind of was was one of the main, and and that's not not at all uh, intended to 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 assign blame, but I think that was that 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 was one of the okay. one of the contributing factors. Well, well, I mean, that faucet um, fell off testnet, but that didn't have any effect on the um, uh, the rest of the problems. So that I, I think the problems are to do with design um, issues in the um, uh, the block header syncing as inherited from um, Bitcoin Core and as implemented somewhat differently in um, Zebra D. Um, and we we understand fairly well what the issues are now, 
Um, they were quite complicated and, and they can't really be summarized as um, any single node having done anything wrong. Yeah, um, and also, also one, one just factoid um, that, uh, that Strad discovered uh, in the, the process of working on this was that um, part of the, the reason that Testnet was unable to recover um, was due to a bug in Bitcoin Core that we inherited in 2015 that was finally fixed in 2022. Right, so it was a bug that had been yeah. active in Bitcoin Core for seven years, and the fix is non-trivial. Um, and so we we had well, we hadn't even looked at backporting it because we're not that close to uh, to Bitcoin Core to yeah, if, backporting if, stuff we, from twenty twenty two. But yeah, we we did. That, that's the level of of protocol level uh, stuff that Dara Emma is talking about here. Yeah, we. we... We nearly managed to uh, to backport some network fixes from um, Bitcoin, and we, and we did backport some. But that getting all the way to twenty twenty two was never on the cards with um, Zcash D. Um, uh, so oh, yeah. it's it's understandable why it happened. And then to to briefly add to that, uh, in order to mitigate the issue on Zebra's side, uh, another bug was introduced in Zebra that triggered uh, another bug in Zcash D. So. I think there's a lot to talk about here. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the lesson from this is um, don't make changes just to compensate for bugs in other software um, that we need to. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that bug was discussed, but it, it wasn't really um, something that was on um, the ECC team's um, radar to fix because we had lots of other fires um, to fight. And so now that we have fewer fires to fight, um, it, we are in a better position to um, to kind of, for the time that uh, Zcash D is, um, is still going to be relevant, um, to iron out any um, interoperability problems, which is still important to do. Um, and to make sure that um, that Zebra D is going to be um, stable when it's on its own. Yeah, and just just to put a, a different spin on that, also, um, I would say also that at the point where this workaround for this Zcash debug was put into place, uh, the ZF and uh, ECC teams were not collaborating nearly as closely That's as we are today. Yeah, uh, that's true. So that's been a huge improvement uh, to to be able to really work together on on these kinds of issues. So, so what what was it that actually triggered the the situation the situation on test now that needed to be recovered uh, from there? Okay, it, it, I, I, will do an, I will do an I will do an I will do an in depth um, uh, explanation. Okay, uh, I will attempt to do an in depth explanation because it's a really complicated protocol. Um, so. So there are headers and blocks. Um, and what Bitcoin Core does is it um, downloads. So, so originally, um, it would um, uh, get both headers and blocks um, in, sort of in parallel, but it only um, looked at a single node, and that's still the case. And um, so it, it would pick. Um, one node out of its peers that it thought was good um, and get the headers from that. Um, at some point, they changed to um, try and get as many headers as possible um, and then download the, uh, the blocks. Um, and the reason for that is that um, if you're after a checkpoint, um, then you basically know that you're on the right chain and you don't have to do as much uh, validation on the block. So that's uh, an efficiency improvement thing. Okay. Um, the, the way that um, a node is supposed to um, answer uh, get headers requests is, is relevant to this bug. And it's a, it's a little bit clunky. Um, there's a maximum number of headers that will fit in um, the response to a get headers message. Um, and 
if the responding peer sends the maximum number of headers, that's um, considered to mean that there are more headers to come. So it's not at the end of its chain. Um, if it sends fewer than that number of headers, then um, uh, that that's a, so a weak indication that it was uh, at the end of its chain. And so we might delay, um, uh, uh, we, we don't conclude that there are any more locks, uh, any more headers to fetch. Um, so uh, Zcash D, uh, which does not have the the headers first change, so it's it's still um, uh, downloading headers and blocks concurrently. Um, it had a, a bug inherited, uh, an efficiency bug inherited from Bitcoin Core. Um, this is the bug that. Uh, from 2015 that was only fixed in 2022, where it would send redundant get headers requests. So um, it, it's it's basically supposed to just send um, get headers for um, the ranges that it actually uh, needs in sequential order, um, but it actually will send um, additional requests and that was causing um, much greater bandwidth usage. Um, so um Zcash D when syncing um that would take several multiples of the um bandwidth that it actually needed. And so um let's see we let's see so what Zebra D did to try and compensate for that is not to send um the, the full, um, the maximum number of headers in any given message. So instead of sending 160 um, headers, if it had more to send later, um, then it would send 158. Um, and for the network at the time that that um, workaround was put in place, um, that sort of worked um, reasonably well and avoided the um, the bandwidth um, efficiency problem from Zcash D. Um, but in a different situation where um, it's the Zcash D nodes that have the authoritative chain and um, the, uh, Sorry, it's the Zebra D nodes that have the authoritative chain and the Zcash D nodes are trying to catch up. Um, the effect of not sending the full, um, uh, the maximum number of headers in each message was that, um, so a Zcash D node would uh, think much more slowly because it would think that it had reached the um, end of that chain um, uh, when it's connecting to a given peer. And it only connects to one peer, um, which exacerbates the problem. So what was happening was that um, when you, when the peer mined another block or when it sent an inf message, I think it was, um, it, it kind of would get unstuck. So it would, um, uh, it would load 158 headers and then wait for the next block to be mined and then on another 158 headers and so on, instead of, um, of loading the headers continuously. Uh, and this made the sync um, take much, much longer. Um, so yeah, th that was the, the efficiency bug that um, was introduced by this change um, uh, that it became an emergent bug due to this change in uh, Zebra D. Um, and so, what we did to fix the network, um, well, we did several things. Um, this all interacts with um, another thing called the uh, max to page. So if a um, if no blocks have been mined for uh, 24 hours, um, then the network will break because um, that, that's not an expected condition. Um, and in the normal situation, that would normally indicate that um, your clock is wrong, for example, or your um, 
that you're on a fork um, and you shouldn't continue. Um, so it's it's reasonable that um, uh, that um, that rule should exist, but um, in a situation where no blocks have been mined on the network for a day, um, and in this case it was no blocks have been mined for for seven days, um, then it, it creates a big problem. So what we did to work around that was just to to increase the constant, which is normally um, twenty four hours. Um, I just increased that to 10 days. Um, and that got the particular nodes that I was using to catch up um, uh, to see that um, we would near enough the, um, the tip uh, and they were able to mine. Um, and then there was another um, bug in Zcashd where um, so the, there are constraints on the, um, the timestamp of blocks. So the timestamp of a block has to be um, greater than the, um, it's called the median time pass. So it, it's a, um, a kind of average of the last 17 um, block timestamps. Um, the details don't really matter. But it also cannot be um, too far in the future relative to the uh, median time pass. So it can't be more than, uh, there can't be uh, a gap of more than 90 minutes between um, the median time passed of a block and its timestamp. Um, and so if you try to mine a block just using the current time when you're in the situation where the network is broken, um, then it won't work. So what, um, what you're supposed to do really is to clamp the um, block time to um, the maximum time allowed by the consensus rules. Um, but uh, let's see, Zcashd, so ZebraD was doing that. Zcashd was trying to do that, but there was a bug. Um, and so we, we figured out what the bug was, um, did a temporary workaround, and then Zcashd was able to catch up. Yep. And, and the, I'm just the other thing that we did, the other thing we, that we did was just um, manually uh, figure out what the best chain was and then um, do add nodes to to, um, to to create a well well connected um, network between those nodes. Also, I did verify that uh, that without uh, the max tip age setting, that uh, a Zcash D node can can now uh, sync and and uh, it is in current state. So test test net uh, is is healed. So, cool. so this this was triggered because there were no basically there was no mining on testnet for like a week. Yeah. And the point I was trying to make earlier is that the reason there was no mining on testnet for a week is because the sole node that was mining, in order to supply the the faucet, dropped off. So, so the so we so on our side, Yasser did the work to set up a miner um, in cloud infrastructure about a week ago, but that miner fell into the hole and couldn't get out of it. Uh, and so we- In fact, we're... everything everything that we tried to set up fell into this hole and we hadn't figured out what the workaround was um, because there were two simultaneous workarounds needed um, and because of this um, other bug that was um, that was slowing down sync. So we, we couldn't get to the point um, uh, of even being able to use the, the workaround in a sufficient uh, in a every time we tried to enough. scramble out of the hole, then the the whole wall, you know, spalled away and degraded, and we couldn't climb out. And and each of us ran out of time and needed to do something else and shut down our node. Um, but yeah, we, we finally got out. Well, it, it's just really good that this happened on testnet instead of on. Maybe. Yes, this is what testnet <laughs> is for. <laughs> Although you know, I've said that if if this were to happen on mainnet, like. So if main if difficulty on mainnet were to drop like that, uh, then you know CPU mining would become feasible again, and you know I just set up the CPU miner. It would be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well we are at time. Um, so if people want to stay on and uh, continue chatting, they're they're free to do so. But um, uh, if people want to drop off because this is the past the end now of the scheduled scheduled meeting, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, and we'll see you again in two weeks' time.
Are you in oh, two weeks? If, in two if weeks. You want, if you want more detail yeah. on those two bugs, the, the, I think the most recent bugs on uh, Zcash, Zcash, and uh, uh, Zcash Foundation Zebra. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.